I'm pretty sure it was less than a month I had this plant before I killed it. One that just absolutely did not want to live. I feel really bad about this one because this one was a gift. When this one just started to go downhill, I just said, fine, whatever, you're going in the bin. I challenge all of you to pick my plant serial killer name. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today, if you couldn't tell by the decor and these cat ears that you might not even be able to see, this is going to be another halloween -y video. I think actually my last halloween -y video for this year. I have a confession. I am a plant murderer. I know, I know. We all like to pretend that I'm like really, 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 really perfect at plants all the time, but that is definitely not the case and it's probably not the case for any plant parent. So, in this video I wanted to talk about plants that I have killed in the last year. If you are new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet, so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos, and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here and you want to see the confessions that I have, stick around and thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Right, um, let's get into the plants that I have killed over the past year. So the first plant that I have killed in the last year, so since last October, was the Syngonium Grey Ghost. I actually got this plant specifically for my Spooky Plants video last Halloween, and I got it as a small cutting. Its main leaf died off almost immediately, and then I was stuck with a wet stick and the west it grew a leaf and then got root rot and promptly passed away <laughs> which was really really annoying for me i really had wanted a gray ghost for such a long time it was a wishlist plant luckily i did end up getting another one in one of my imports this past year but it was just so hard because i wanted this plant so bad i love these sort of gray ghosty leaves <laughs> So that's a terrible description, but I love these leaves so so much and it was so so sad when I just slowly watched it wither away. I think it did not enjoy transport and the sort of root rot that it got after that just kind of killed it. I think in the same order from the same seller, I also got a Snow Queen Pothos, which also died probably around the same time, like November-ish, maybe December of 2021, and that one also had root rot and died. So I'm wondering if this is a me problem or the seller's problem. It's probably a me problem, let's be honest. Uh, I find sometimes getting cuttings, especially if you're getting them in this time of year by post, if the weather isn't right while they're being shipped, and especially this year since there's been postal strikes in the UK, plants are coming a lot slower than they would have normally during the year, and when it is cold, you are risking a whole lot more buying plants. That is one of the reasons why I'm currently on my plant ban that I'm hoping to stick to until March. I'm gonna try so freaking hard to not buy any plants just because of this sort of risk that you're taking when buying plants at this time of year, which I think I just blew off last year saying, I could do it, I can fix it, it'll be fine. And that came and bit me in the behind. So uh, it happens, I learned my lesson and now I'm going to try harder this coming year. So that was that was a struggle those two cuttings next up i think i killed this one around december time it is the watermelon peperomia i had this plant that i grew from cuttings i believe and i think i did it as stem cuttings rather than leaf cuttings which i've only recently just learned how to have success in so i am learning and trying to grow as a plant parent but peperomia for pretty much my entire plant career have been really, really hard for me. I've struggled to keep them alive, figuring out what they want. Are they more succulenty, more hoya-y, more aeroid-y? I know they're not any of those things, they're peperomia, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where they fit in within my plant care routine. And so this one 
it was just on the struggle bus for so so long its leaves were splitting they were cupped weird and it was just a bit deformed i think it had some variegation which was quite nice but uh overall this plant i as much as i wanted it to live i could not get it to and so it it, it was another casualty i think in about december time so a post christmas casualty i had so i went away for two and a half weeks over the Christmas period, I went back home to LA and I chose not to have a plant sitter during that time. I figured seeing as it is winter, my plants will probably be okay not getting watered for two and a half weeks. And for the most part, that was true. Almost all of my collection was completely fine. I did a big water before I left. But one that just absolutely did not want to live, and so promptly died uh, while I was away, was this Alocasia stingray. And I had wanted this plant for ages. I love Alocasia stingray. Their leaves, they do the weird like pointy thing at the end. I think they're so freaking cool. And so I was pretty upset that this one died, but it just dried out completely. I'm pretty sure I had it in soil. But even before I left, it was declining. It didn't have pests or anything. I had checked it loads of times, but I just think it might have been one that just wanted to not continue to live in my home. I am I'm not blaming myself for this one because I, I genuinely did everything I would normally do to keep it alive aside from going away. And it all of my other allocations were fine, so why didn't you continue to live with me, Mr. Stingray? Huh? <laughs> huh? Um, I'm bitter about it, if you couldn't tell. I do have um, a very, very, very baby sting right now, which I'm really happy about. But this one was really big and luscious, and <sighs> it would have been nice if I could have kept it. Hello, Cleo. You want to come say hi? Hello, baby girl. Hello. <laughs> She's like, absolutely not. I don't want to be here. Um... Hello, baby girl. We matched today. I'm a kitty cat too. <laughs> Next up, we have the Tradescantia blush. The little pink one. I don't remember what it's called. I'll put it up on the screen if I can figure it out. But this one I got from Props, but it was doing so, so well for a while. Sorry if you can hear Cleo breathing. She's a snotty little girl. But I'm pretty sure I got it from Props and it was doing so so well. I managed to take it from moss and then put it into soil and it was doing fine and growing pretty well. It was probably the best grown one I have ever had and something just happened one day and I think it just dried out. I, I'm pretty sure it was probably underwatering. Uh, it was again a small plant and they can be quite finicky. Bless you. So it was, yeah, I think I just kind of forgot about it like for one water and I've had it, enough struggles with Trascontia in general that one water on such a small plant just it ruined it and it was too far gone to be able to save. Cleo, I'm trying to film here. Up next, I feel really bad about this one because this one was a gift. It was an African violet, which I got from my aunt and she had propped it from a single leaf and it was doing fine for quite a while. It was in terracotta, which I never use. I never learned to take care of plants in terracotta. I know that's a me problem, but I just never really learned how they needed to be cared for and that they like I understand that they need to be watered more frequently because the terracotta will wick the water away the moisture away from the soil so I understand that but it just didn't quite fit into my watering routine in the way I would have hoped it would and so I think I ended up underwatering this one and it crisped up crisped up and died can you see a trend here <laughs> is it that I'm an underwaterer? I challenge all of you to pick my plant serial killer name. I really want to see what you have in mind. But yeah, I chronic underwaterer is, I think, my biggest issue. <sighs> Carrying on. Spider plant. 
got this spider plant from the plant swap and I picked it and I was like, okay, this is my last go with spider plants. And after this, if it doesn't grow well, I am done. Surprise, surprise, it died. Do I know why? Absolutely not. Could I have saved it? Potentially, but I have no idea. <laughs> oh, it just started declining, getting worse and worse. I was treating it like I treat all of my other plants. And if any of you know, I struggle with spider plants in general. I've tried neglecting them. I've tried giving them loads of care. I've tried giving them loads of light, less light, humidity, non-humidity. I feel like I've tried everything with spider plants at this point, And they just don't want to live for me. And so this one was no different. And it promptly decided it wanted to die. I think it did last me like four or five months, which is pretty good. I'll take that. But... It, before I knew it, it was just quite unhappy and I didn't care enough to save it. I know that's bad, but I just didn't, I did not care. It, I, I've, I've just given up with them. And so when this one just started to go downhill, I just said, fine, whatever, you're going in the bin. So another plant I killed this year was my Tillandsia, also known as air plant. I got a bunch last summer in 2021 and I killed several of them quite early on. I think through overwatering. I'm not quite sure. I'm still not super duper familiar with them or understand them very well. But one of them was doing absolutely fine. And so I kept it and kept it growing. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure this one died because I literally never watered it after that. I got so scared from the... I think overwatering of the first ones and the rot that came from that, bless you, that I was just like, nope, you're never getting watered ever again because you will die. Um, and so I took it too far to the other stream and I'm pretty sure I let it dry out and it just died. Yay. I'm not sure exactly when it died. They're air plants, so you can't really tell. They just kind of, like you could see it getting paler and paler, but I didn't think of that as an issue so it's fine I don't know when it died but it definitely died sometime this summer <laughs> this next one is actually two um, I'm counting them in the same one because <sighs> string of pearls both a variegated and an unvariegated one that I got I'm pretty sure I killed very 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 quickly they were both propagations which I've never had a string of pearls for myself and so I'm not as familiar with it and it's never been something that I would have picked for myself. The variegated one that I got from Josie I absolutely loved but I'm pretty sure that it like didn't really like being moved from her home to mine. The journey it just massively suffered and never kind of perked back up after it came to my house. I know she had issues with hers when she moved as well so I'm I don't think it's just me. I think they are kind of finicky when it comes to that. So that's okay. The other one, the non-variegated one, I'm pretty sure I just underwatered. I am okay <laughs> at propping things in moss if they're in big containers, but when they're small, I I'm not the best at making sure that they stay moist enough. Moss can dry out really, really quick. And I think this was in like spring, early summer sort of time. And so it was getting warmer and I needed to water it more frequently than I did. And my brain, because it's a succulent, was like, oh, don't worry, um, which I should have worried. <laughs> so it just slowly dried out and passed away. R.I.P. Another post-holiday casualty I had was my Piper Sylvaticum. I went away on holiday this summer for two weeks and I did have a plant sitter this time, but I think this one may have gotten forgotten completely over the two weeks. And unfortunately this was in the summer in which houseplants definitely do need some care and it was during a heat wave. So it was like 35 degrees during the day. And so my plants were drying out quickly. I was watering them like a couple times a week. And so when this one didn't get watered for two weeks, which is like almost four waters, I came back and it was this sort of shriveled up mess. 
and I tried to save it, I tried to chop it back and start from scratch, and like I said, I think it was just too far gone, the roots had dried out too much, and there was just no saving it, unfortunately. And then, I just remember this memo gave me a cutting to try and <laughs> grow, because he saw that I killed my other one, and I killed that one too. <laughs> it was propagating, and I don't know what happened, I think it wasn't... <laughs> I don't I think I didn't pay attention to it quite enough and so I I accidentally let it die. So sorry Memo, I know you tried and I appreciate it. <laughs> but I I wanna try another piper at some point, but um <laughs> I don't have the best track record with them so far. Next I killed yet another Peperomia. Yes. <laughs> this one was one that I had propped from that one single leaf. I still have the leaf and I think it's still propping and I have gotten more props from it since so that's really good. I haven't lost the plant completely but the ones that I had separated off from it and put into a little pot died. I, I think it's again a case of too small of a pot for me to remember to water frequently enough. When I have plants in really really small pots, especially in soil, I tend to forget them and underwater them and that's on me. So I think that's what happened with this one as well. I wasn't that mad because I had the one that I could still prop from, but I mean, it doesn't reinforce my case that I'm bad at peperomias. One day, one day, I'm trying really hard to get better at them, but right now, I will kill them. I'm trying so hard. The Peperomia Frost, the one I have from Claire, is doing it the best I've ever had a Peperomia do. So I'm working really, really hard to try and get that one to stay really nice. Now we're getting into the more recent ones. This one went in the bin last week. It is the Calathea Rattlesnake. Yay! I'm pretty sure I just didn't give this one enough humidity, light, and water, and it just slowly crisped up. I was watching it crisp up, and I just didn't do anything about it. And I know that's on me. I just didn't care enough to save it. That's probably not great, but it wasn't my favorite Calathea. I, my favorite is the Ornata. That's the only one I really want or care to have. And so I have that one now, so the rattlesnake kind of just went like below the radar and I didn't care anymore and so I let it die. And I threw it away last week. Yeah. And then last but not least, my most recent plant murder. Oh, this one is shocking how fast I killed it. It was the heart leaf fern that I got when I got my planty tattoo. I'm pretty sure it was less than a month I had this plant before I killed it. Oh, I... So I got it because I had never had a heart leaf fern before and I didn't really want to take away a more common plant from somebody else who wanted one at, like, at this event. And so I tried one that probably wasn't going to get as taken. And, and I put it in my cabinet and I treated it like I do other humidity loving plants. And maybe I just didn't do enough research on it, but it very, 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 very quickly decided it wanted to curl up and die. And I'm pretty sure it's probably underwatering as well. I am chronic underwater here. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm a chronic underwaterer. So, yeah, I feel really guilty about that one because, I mean, I don't feel bad because I got it for free, kind of, with the tattoo. But I, I'm still annoyed at myself for it. So that one also went out in the bin last week. So yeah, those are all of the plants I have killed in the last year. Yes. <laughs> I am so proud of myself. Overall, I have kept most of my plants alive. Seeing as I've got 200, killing like 12 isn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> but it's still not ideal. I would prefer to kill zero. So maybe I will work on my underwatering issues. Hopefully next year, if I make another Plants I Killed this year video for Halloween, I will have less underwatering. <laughs> hopefully not overwatering. I don't want to compensate in the complete other direction. So hopefully it will all be okay and I will learn from all of my mistakes. 
So far I haven't, but maybe making this video will force me to like really reevaluate how I'm doing things. Also before I go, I want to give a big shout out to my new patrons. Thank you so so much for joining the Good Growing Fam. So thank you so much to Kim, Carrie, Robin, Dorinda, MK, and Coffee Cats Plants 80. I really appreciate you being there and I can't wait to get to know you a bit better. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. A thumbs up down below. And leave a comment on plants that you have killed recently. I need to feel better about myself and know that I'm not the only one here. And subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching. Happy Halloween and I will see you next time. Bye.